Good morning, dear friends. Today I am going to talk on a different topic entitled The Problems and Challenges of Indian English Literature. As languages are the special gifts which God gave to man, no man, society or nation can claim that such and such language is their own or only they have the mastery in it or others' use of it is inferior and incorrect. Of the hundreds of languages in this world, English alone enjoys the privilege of a global language. The reason behind the omnipresence of English is none other than the fact that English empire was the largest in the world where the sun never set. No language, including English, can be called pure or chaste. As most of the Western and Eastern languages, including English and Indian languages, descended from a common parent language called Indo-European, we find the interrelations in their vocabulary. Modern English had its origin in Old English, a group of dialects which were brought to England by the Anglo-Saxon settlers. Old English was then influenced by the Old Norse language of the Viking invaders. The Roman conquest of England influenced English language considerably and hundreds of Latin words got into its vocabulary. The impact of the Norman conquest of England was that English was further enriched by the of Norman French words. Thus, modern English is a hybrid language, borrowing innumerable words from almost all languages of the world. Languages are growing every day and English particularly is growing at a rapid rate. Not only the English-speaking countries, but also the English-using countries like India are contributing considerably to the treasury of English vocabulary. Thus, English is everybody's language, the only language which links and integrates the human race together the only lingua franca which one loves and feels proud of using it as one's mother tongue. Now coming to another important issue regarding English language, the purity and correct use of vocabulary, grammar and syntax. Don't we make errors in our use of grammar and syntax when we use our mother tongue? Don't Englishmen commit these mistakes when they speak and write? The English used by the Englishmen and Americans are no way superior to the English used by the learned men in the non-English speaking countries. For the same reason, a British writer or an American writer cannot claim that his works are superior to the English works from India or other English-using countries. It is high time the Westerners should pluck the colonized superiority complex from their minds and the Indians and the other colonized people should resurrect from their inferiority complex. There are many critical issues regarding Indian English literature. Most of these issues are centered on the choice of English for creative expression since the Indians who use it have highly developed regional languages and literatures. 
That is what makes the Indian English literature distinctive from American, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, West Indian, and even African. There are various approaches to English, Indian English literature. It can be considered as part of English literature, as part of Commonwealth or Third World literature, and as part of Indian literature. Indian English literature should be considered as a part of Indian literature. The main issue of critical focus on Indian English literature is whether it deals with Indian themes or not. English language has created a psychological and linguistic impact on Indian life since 1835. It has considerably changed the syntax and expression of Indian languages and introduced levels of subtlety, irony, and variety. English enriched the multilingualism, a basic principle of, principle of Indian social and cultural life. India has demonstrated that provincialism has no place in literary and cultural expression. Indian literature includes several literatures, Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kashmiri, Maithili, Malayalam, Marathi, Oriya, Punjabi, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Sanskrit, and Indian writing in English. To think and feel as an Indian and express it in a Western medium is a novel experiment in creative mutation. Naturally, there will be successes and failures, and failures will be more than successes. Still, there are men and women who try at it and reach the goal, and they deserve due recognition. Indian writing in English, like other Indian literatures, is greatly influenced by the British literature, and there are Romantics, Victorians, Georgians, and Modernists. Indian English literature has contributed much to the world English literature, the major partners being British literature and American literature. Indian writing in English is thus both an Indian literature and a variety of English literature. It has an appeal both to Indians and Englishmen. Myth is a major influence on any literature which enriches it. India is a country which abounds in diverse myths and naturally Indian writing in English is or should be full of such myths. It is a pity that modern Indian literature with the exception of a few, is ignorant of Indian myth. The modern writers in India seem to be imperfectly aware of the Western myth as well. They try to inject the composite serum of Edmund Freud, D. H. Lawrence, Jean Paul Sartre, Soren Kierkegaard, and Che Guevara in high doses to revive a more even literature. Anglicized Indians of the 19th and early 20th centuries were familiar with their mother tongues as well as Sanskrit and so they could enter into the stream of the Indian traditions if they wanted to. On the other hand, the present Indo-Anglian writers mainly living in the little subculture islands of the cities, ignore the larger tradition. Indian English literature was once considered an inferior literature to Indian literatures in regional languages, as well as English literatures of England and America. Booker prizes to Salman Rushdie, Arunthadi Roy, Kiran Desai, and Aravind Adiga proclaim that Indian English literature is as competent and vibrant as British, Australian, and Canadian and African literature. Why 
Nobel Prize for Literature slithered from India after Tagore is because of reasons other than the quality of literature in India. Literatures in the regional languages of India have always an upper hand over Indian English literature. But Indian English literature, literature created in one's own second language, should be encouraged and honored rather than censured. The governments and publishers should promote this literature because only through this medium India can speak to the world, share her ideas, philosophies, traditions, ethos, cultures, emotions, dreams, and beauties. Indian English literature deserves more encomium and consideration than English translations of it, Indian literature in regional languages because translations are thrice removed from reality and beauty. When we analyze Indian English literature and make a survey along the contemporary Indian English writers, we have to accept the fact that Indian English novel has an upper hand over poetry, drama, and short stories. Another truth that emerges in this analysis is that major majority of the Indian English novelists are women rather than men who are settled in the foreign metropolitan cities. The publishers have no reluctance, rather they are after these pedantic writers offering big royalty for whatever they scribble. Leading purely Western life, how much can these established writers represent our country or inculcate our noble and traditional values is a point which many critics and readers fail to notice. Having an eye on the Western readers and thinking in terms of pure marketability, they sell our country by focusing and highlighting only the dark sides such as superstitions, illiteracy, poverty, slums, casteism, communalism, religious fundamentalism, sexism, slavish mentality, etc. There are many talented Indian English novelists who are settled in English Indian suburbs and small towns whose manuscripts have been knocking door after door of publishing houses. Some of these writers are even willing to pay a share of the publishing costs, but the profit-minded publishers turn down their records. As novels are lengthy, they can't find places in academic journals and periodicals. Thus, these talented writers are destined to bury their talents along with their bodies when they bid goodbye to this unsympathetic world. If this is the case of Indian English novelists, the fate of Indian English poets and playwrights are worse than that of Indian English short worse and that of Indian English short story writers are the worst. Only a very few established poets and dramatists get due recognition from the publishers. Unlike the novelists, most of the contemporary Indian English poets are men and they are settled mainly in the Indian cities and small towns. Ezekiel and Kamala Das were truly duly recognized, but they are no more with us. Many contemporary Indian English poets had to start their own publishing houses to publish their works. Many publishers demand money by which by way of expenditure for publishing the books. It is true that literatures in regional languages are more popular among the Indian, Indian readers and for that reason those books have more market than Indian English books. As I have stated earlier, English is a lingua franca of the global family and hence it is the duty of the educationists 
school teachers, professors of colleges and universities, Sahitya academies, literary clubs, governments and publishers to promote Indian English literature. Another question for discussion is this. Is Indian English literature as competent as mother tongue literatures? May not be. An Indian writer thinking and writing in a foreign language may not be as fluent, attractive and vibrant as another Indian writer thinking and writing in his own mother tongue. The Indian ethos, myth, hundreds of terms in regional languages which have no equivalent in English and even the rhythm and musicality of such regional words cannot be copied well in Indian English short stories, poems, novels or plays. In spite of these shortcomings, English language has its own beauty and our students and younger generation should be inspired to dive into this world language. One major demerit of Indian English literature is that the writers settled in major cities speak only about the problems of city people and totally ignore the vast majority of their fellow men fighting against destinies in the poverty-stricken villages. The Indian English writers should never forget that what Gandhi has taught us that India lives in her thousands of villages. So there ought to be shifts in the themes and characters of their works. The innocent as well as wretched rural and tribal life, the dark realities of the village and tribal men, the exploitation and discrimination shown to them by the city people as well as governments, the relation between man, nature and God, the scintillating beauty of nature. These should be included into Indian English short stories, poems and novels and naturally there will be more demand for the books from the educated villagers and the publishers will be bound to publish such stories, novels and poems. Though we are not masters of English language, there is no excuse for glaring grammatical errors if they appear in Indian English literature. Hence, the Indian English writers, poets, novelists, as well as short story writers, should be proficient in English and should check dictionaries before they use any dubious or ambiguous word or phrase. As their works are meant for foreign readers as well, it is my opinion that the overuse of regional language terms should be avoided. If a term has an equivalent in English, that English term should be used rather than torturing the foreign reader to run after dictionaries and encyclopedias. The governments, both center and states, have a great role in promoting literature of the country. More funds should be allotted for the promotion of Indian English literature. The writers should be encouraged by grants and awards. The editors of journals and magazines and low and emerging publishing firms should be financially aided for their selfless service. The Sahitya Academy should stop patronizing the established writers and start honoring the emerging talents. In short, the governments, academies and the intelligentsia should look at the Indian English writers with a special love for they are the country's spokesmen to the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much.